How's it going, guys? And welcome back to Retrospect, your go-to retro gaming podcast. You're listening to episode 48. Today, we'll be reminiscing on what it was like to grow up playing Sega. And joining me on the podcast, as always, we have Brandon Sega Lamakia. What's up, dude? Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should probably say um, that we didn't have an episode last week. Jake's been moving. He's been a, he's been a busy bean. But we did yeah. put up a, um audio-only podcast for our listeners uh, that featured Casey Neistat. So there was something for you to consume. Yes. So if you are one of the few who prefers to listen to the audio only or just, I mean, uh, check it out on there. I think it's on all listening services. And that's a, that was a cool interview, man. Um, getting to sit down and chat with Casey Neistat. I, I listened through the whole thing just to make sure there wasn't anything else I needed mm-hmm. to you know, fix or clean out, really. And uh, it was it was great. So I was like, I just listened to it. And I was like, oh, oh this is interesting. This is, this is interesting to hear like Casey's take on the future and where we're headed and gaming in general. And yeah, it seems like you guys had a good time. Yeah, man, he's a he's a big nerd, and he kind of keeps that under wraps in all of his videos and stuff. But um, when I when I went to visit him, I'm like, "What do you do now?" Because like he he basically doesn't want to. He wants to work as little as possible. And right. He's, he's just said, "I game. I basically play games. I've bought this big TV for my office, and I just <laughs> when I don't want to work, I just play games. Living the dream." That's yeah. If if only if only I could just make that decision where it's like, yeah, what well, I don't I don't want to work today. I'm just going to game instead, and you don't have to worry about any other any other thing outside of just playing that video game. That would be nice. That would be nice. And his shop too. I mean, his shop is sick. So, yeah. um, also I was yeah I was complaining to Brandon uh, earlier, but the AC in our upstairs is out right now. So if you guys are watching the video and you just see like sweat. <laughs> pouring down my face uh that's why thankfully it's the morning right now so it's actually cooler but yeah last night it was like 83 uh, degrees fahrenheit in our room which was like 20 what did i say 28 29 degrees 28 Celsius. degrees you said yeah. yeah dude so it's just it's not comfortable it's not, not comfortable Would anything not over 20 degrees you know things start to get a little sweaty <laughs> we we slept downstairs on the couch last night because it was it was just too hot oh, up here. I was man. Like, i'm not doing that i'm not doing that so, anyways, uh, despite all of that, we are here today to talk about Sega, and I'm excited about this. This kind of came up, or uh, just something I wanted to talk about with Brandon because we were gonna celebrate the Famicom's uh, 30th anniversary in Japan, and uh, we both kind of realized, well, Brandon's like, I don't have a ton of experience with the Famicom, and I was like, oh yeah, you were a Sega guy, and so yeah. I thought we should, I thought we should talk about this. Um, just really a, a brief overview of what that even is, what the, what this, the Mega Drive is. Did I, did I say Famicom? I, I, hope, I hope I didn't. But we're going to talk about Sega, specifically the Mega Drive or the, the Genesis, as it was known in the United States, and uh, just walk through Brandon's experience being a Sega gamer. Because those, those Sega gamers, they're, they're some different people. <laughs> they're you <know>? weirdos. <laughs> you, can't, oh, you can't trust those guys. I'm just, I'm just saying right now. Uh, so, yeah. Up, but before we uh, just jump into the topic, though, quick housekeeping: if you are a fan of the show, please be sure to go and leave a review on any of your preferred listening services. That does a lot for us, and it's it's a great thing. We're getting close to episode fifty, so be thinking about uh, some topics, Brandon. You want to cover oh, on the? 50th I need to get episode. someone in. I need to get someone in. I'm going to put that on my to do list. Yeah, right now. the to do list. Big episode 50. We can do like a, a ranking list, like the top 50 blah, blah, blahs. You know, we can do whatever we want to, man. 50, 50 worst Sega games. <laughs> hint, hint, they're all bad. No, I'm just kidding. No! <laughs> How dare you? Uh, but yeah, leave a review. That'd be great. And uh, yeah, be thinking about episode 50. There could be some cool stuff in the works. I'm not going to promise anything, but yeah, we're working on some stuff. So real quick, uh if you guys didn't know, like I mentioned, the Mega Drive uh, is the fourth generation console from Sega, and it was released in Japan in 1988 in Europe, and then Australia and other places in 1990. The console was released in North America as the Genesis because it, Sega was not able to secure the name rights, I guess, for that console, which is kind of funny to me. So when I think people mentioned the Mega Drive, I truly like wasn't even making the connection at first that that was the mm-hmm. Genesis. And I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, 
that's the Genesis. I was like, I know the Genesis. The one Same with the thing, weird... but different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, weird buttons, like, you know, you had the three-button layout on the right side or the f- six-button layout on the right side. And yeah, yeah. S- some had turbo buttons. It was, it, was a whole, it was a whole ordeal. So first question for you, Brandon, is um, being a, Se- you know, a Sega kid growing up, did you always want to be a Sega kid? Was that, was that just like, what, no. what, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think anybody wants to be a Sega kid. You know, they all want to be, you know, Nintendo, Mario, Pokemon, that kind of stuff. But um, so, a re- like, the Sega Mega Drive was my first real memory of, like, console gaming. And I think my dad just picked one up probably because it was cheaper than Nintendo products. <laughs> and Sonic was cool. Like, Sonic was everywhere in the mm. UK. You know, I don't know what it was. I don't even know if there was TV shows, but it just seemed to be everywhere. And... The Mega Drive came out similar time to the Game Gear, and I think I actually got the Game Gear first, but it was like Ooh. shared between me and my brother, and that's when I kind of got first experience with um, Sonic. But because the Game Gear is such a beast, it takes up so many batteries that I think my dad was like, you know, if they keep playing Sonic this much, uh, I might as well just buy a Mega Drive. <laughs> um, so I think like I, I must have been five or so so i was born in 92 so this was like coming into like mid late 90s so mm-hmm. as you know consoles back then they had such a long lifespan so even getting the mega drive like years later boxed was like brand new was still a thing and mm-hmm. um i must have got that for a birthday or christmas and we had that um on a tv in the kitchen i don't know why i just don't think dad wanted to have it in the living room for some weird reasons but i oh, have vivid awesome. memories of having like a tiny, it wasn't tiny, it was a big CRT that was like super long, but yes, a big small in the back. one in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember playing it on there, and me and my brother had those terrible controllers. So we had the, um, it was the three button uh, mm-hmm. Sega Mega Drive controller, and it was almost, it just, I don't even know how to explain the, the, the uncomfortable nature of it but it was like holding a mouse you know like look at the curvature on this thing it's like that it was like disgusting um so we had that it's like but- holding a mouse wait hold on do you also have a trackball mouse like me oh we trackball buddies dude i did not oh know you were a trackball God. guy yeah, look at man. us dude look at us you know like wow. I, d- I don't have any pain in my wrist yet but you know just i'm just like <laughs> that's gonna come sooner or later so i might as well just just Take get ahead of that, dude. Yeah. Get that get that carpal tunnel out of here. Yeah, save your arthritis because you <laughs> yes. already got eye issues, man. It's 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 yeah. coming for you. Oh man. <laughs> so we had a conversation before this podcast that my my vision's getting a little blurry and it might be time to sacrifice the eyes to the glasses. Sacrifice the look, man, they're trendy. Everyone's wearing them. You're gonna be fine, dude. Did you it, did you uh, not, not to break away from our topic, but I wanted glasses as a kid. I like I like thought that I needed glasses. My mom, my mom's like, you, Jake, you don't need glasses. We're not getting you glasses. I was like, but, but I want some. You know, same with like look braces. it into your screens as closely as possible. Like yeah, just blur them. And then I went to college, and same thing. I like was in the back of a class, and all my friends were like taking notes on like what the professor was putting up on the board. And I was like, how can you guys read this? And they're like, I mean, I, I, they're like, I can just see it. And I'm like. I need glasses. I was like, dang it. <laughs> like, I was not happy at that time to realize I needed glasses. I was like, no. Uh, so I was the same. I wanted glasses as a kid. Thought they were cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now I don't want them, uh, <laughs> but I might have to have them. It's just the faff of like finding the right ones, then breaking. Mm. Like, I'm a sweaty dude. Like, I'm a big lad. <laughs> if I'm out in the summer and things start steaming up, I'm going to be pissy as hell, man. No, just- dude. Look, these guys got little nose grippies. You see that right there? Little nose yeah. grippies. You just you just slap these guys on, and they don't they don't move around. They're light. They do great. You yeah. you, you can also be really dorky and get like a little like wrap around little band for yourself if you want to, and like <laughs> strap your glasses to your head, <laughs> go into sport mode. Oh my god! <laughs> Please, and they're no. not cheap, right? Like here in the UK, glasses they're definitely mm. over like a hundred pounds a pop if you get good ones. Do you guys have Warby Parker? In... No, we've got something called Spec Savers. Oh, weird. Okay. Well, uh, it's not weird, but <laughs> it's just I, I can't believe Warby is in other places. Uh, but they, there's, there's like, you can, you can find some cheap options. Uh, there's like I Buy Direct and a few other places that they just sell glasses for cheap. And it's like coming from the same manufacturer that makes all the expensive frames or whatever. So you're got good. You. You're good. Yeah. 
All right. We'll see. But speaking of things that we we didn't <laughs> didn't want or we did want as kids, but maybe didn't want as we got older, the Sega. Let's get back to it. So yeah, I think just because the Sega Mega Drive was a few years old, my my old man could get it cheaper than any Nintendo console. Um, so so we had that for many many years, mm-hmm. uh, and I think we jumped. So we had the Mega Drive, and then we went to PlayStation One. No, yes, PlayStation One, and then Dreamcast, and then. I was old enough to kind of buy my own, I guess. I was going to say, um, did your parents, your your parents supported the gaming. They they bought you the stuff, which is nice. You know, they're correct, like, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get you the PlayStation One. We're gonna get you Dreamcast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I think then we could like save for games if need be, or ask the ask for a game for Christmas or your birthday. Um, but the Sega Sega just seemed more popular in in where I was living. I don't know if that was my town because we lived like yeah. in a in a in a council estate, so not a lot. The kids and the families didn't have a lot of money, so I think we were mm-hmm. behind the trend, maybe by a few years. Um, that probably explains like why we had the slightly older consoles. But the handhelds, we'd get them pretty new, you know, because they were semi-affordable. Um, but the that. Mega Drive and the Game Gear, yeah, has a you know was probably my first experience with with consoles. A home console. Uh, that was actually mm-hmm. one of my questions. So yeah, most of your friends all had. Sega consoles. You, you said Steve or somebody in your neighborhood may have had Nintendo or something like that. Was yeah, there one kid? Th- who was it? It was. I think it was Tom. No, there was definitely one guy. Or Corey, I think his name was, had like an N sixty four, and it was kind of like that thing that you'd go around and play. But I think he only had like one or two controllers. So mm. you, you'd either have to be best friends with him, or you'd be <laughs> queuing outside his mom's house, I'm like, "Can I have a go? I don't like Sonic anymore. I want to play Mario." <laughs> I'm not here to play with Tom. I just want to play his, his video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Corey can just just go to the toilet, and I'll just play with my friends. <laughs> we we had a we had a friend like that too. He was very wealthy in our neighborhood, and he had all the cool stuff. So we'd go to his house to like play all of his things. But we like weren't like great friends with him. And he was a little bit older than us. But he would like he would let us come in and play with his stuff. <laughs> We're like, okay. His name was Chase. I still remember him to this day. Chase. Yeah. Can yeah. we come inside? Is Chase home? Yeah, Chase was the cool, the cool. Chase isn't home. No problem. I'll I'll just play on his N sixty four. That's fine. Chase, Chase yeah. can stay at school. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. He had a <laughs> he had a pool. He had a pool too. So I mean, he was yeah. He was. Oh set, man. man, he was set. What dude. a life. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what were some of your favorite games? Did well, like, funny, you... funny you asked that. I've bought oh. five of my favorite games. So before Jake even um, came up with this idea, he actually sent me the idea of the topic of this podcast this morning. Over the last two days, Surprise. I had a, I had a couple of Mega Drive games come in because I bought last week. Analog sold the last of their what's it called Mega SG, which mm-hmm. is their Mega Drive console. Um, they didn't send me a controller because apparently they don't sell these things with controllers, so I can't <laughs> actually play it yet. Um, so I have had to buy a controller and wait for that. But my favorite games, in no particular order, actually this one's this one's my favorite, and I don't think this one was too popular in the U.S. But this one's called Dynamite Heady. Oh, you, you talked about head this. in like fourteen different ways. This scene is set. The headstrong puppet may be a reject, but he's out to prove his worth. Forty zany switchable heads to choose and use as you bite, swing, jump, and butt your way through the dark demon's castle. Mm. Woo! Did you pick this, this up because we just... talked about it on like underrated retro games? It's yeah. just like just got stuck in your head, and you're like, I got to do this. I got to buy it yeah. again. <laughs> yep, this podcast is certainly making me spend my money. There's no I'm profit sorry. here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's just I, I just think it was a cool alternative to Sonic, super colorful, a bit more challenging, pretty yeah. cool ways to use your head, a bit like Rayman uses his oh. gloves, but this time Dynamite Head is using his oosh, his noggin. <laughs> using his oosh. <laughs> um, that's one of my favorites. Then you've got a classic lion king you know every kid oh, loves lion yeah. king so playing this you know you're basically going around as simba kicking ass look at that sh- box art real quick that is some that is some nice box art man how a little minimal. silhouette yeah i love that dude jeez and Come then you just go like just holding this and just listening like listen to this if you guys listening ready oh i'm oh. gonna take out the cartridge <laughs> oh and a little scratchy scratchy 
Oh man, right in the nostalgia. And then like close it again. Oh, oh, please, <laughs> please start a uh, a uh, what is it? What is it called? ASMR. Is yeah, it? ASMR channel for like just retro video game paraphernalia. Let's listen to Dynamite Heady. Ooh, oh damn, we've even got a manual. Let's listen to this one. That's Ooh, nice. Ready? Ooh. I can hear like the wind flapping against your mic. <laughs> oh god. Lion King, I'll quickly smash through these. One of the best, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Oh, classic. A little bit of ASMR oh. for you. Oh, there's not much there. Oh, there we go. Good click, good click. It's like opening a VHS. Yeah, just lovely. And then this one was one of my favorites. Earthworm Jim. Oh, Can't man. Go you, with this. you did get some good ones, dude. Yeah, they're you're not even cheap set either. Up, brother. I think they're like twenty pound a pop, man. But they are um, boxed. And oh yeah, comes with the manual and stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna do a super cut of you just like opening all those, going, oh, oh, yeah, uh, ish, ish, <laughs> and just uh, just having them like stacked. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, we got a little cartridge slot here. This is turning out to be a real weird podcast. This is this is what we, this is what the people came for. Ooh. That's Ooh, nice. Probably gonna break that one. Yeah, be careful, dude. Analog Ooh. SG was not built for that, okay? No, the original last, but finally not least. It's gotta oh. be Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah. I'm not sure about the box art. We've got two different kind of box arts here in the UK. You can see you've got like a blue and then like a more minimal Sega Mega Drive logo huh. going on. Well, that one, yeah, you got the Genesis on the Genesis logo on the one side, and that's a Mega, Mega Drive. Is that the difference? Mm, it says Mega Drive on that one. Does the blue one say Mega Drive also? Okay, Mega it does. Drive. Mega Drive. Weird. Weird. Did they, I, I guess I my my screen was like a little blurry. It just yeah. looked like it said Genesis. But yeah, classic games like Mortal Kombat was awesome. A bit more mature for my six-year-old self, but you know, <laughs> ripping people's throats open. I think my dad used to like that one. Yep. Yeah, we uh, we were not allowed to have Mortal Kombat growing up. <laughs> I I got it. I think I was telling you this on one of the podcasts. I got I got a copy of Mortal Kombat with my N64, and my mom was like, "Nope, you're not playing this." And I was like, "Dang it!" Like, I was like, "How? Yeah, <laughs> get over here." <laughs> How do you even know, how do you even know what this is? Yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. It looks like the Genesis is the same or very similar font, uh, mm. but just a, just a little bit different. They have the red the red edges, and then there's the blue Mega Drive edge. That's lovely. Mm. I love that nostalgia, baby. Nostalgia, so, baby. So, talking more about the console itself, uh, like what 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 do you think it was about like? the Mega Drive that made it special? Like what, play, thinking back on it now and playing on that, like what 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 can you say was distinct about the Mega Drive? That's, that's actually a difficult question for me because it was the only choice I really had. So I couldn't compare as a kid. Admittedly, I went over to Corey's or whatever his name was uh, to play on some... <laughs> Uh, games. Uh, um, he he was nothing to me. I only Poor N64. <laughs> yeah. um, nothing. Um, but I think it had like slightly more mature games. It as a kid, like that mm -hmm. was a big thing. Like, huh, you're playing Super Mario. Yeah, well, I'm finishing people and slaying their heads off with one punch of Mortal Kombat. Ha, your baby, look at me. I'm a fully grown child now. You know, and like Earthward Jim was like pretty dark as well in some places. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, when I shut the curtains, I'd be there playing Lion King with my mom. Like, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Simba. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're playing Super Mario Bros. Wow, that game sucks. Yeah. Oh god. So well. Uh, I'm probably saying that, but there was no. I don't think now looking back, the Sega Mega Drive, you know, was inferior to the to the N64. <laughs> well, to the N64, yes, but I think the, the the better comparison really was the NES to the yeah. Genesis, and then Genesis to the Super Nintendo. Like those are the two that were actually competing. Um, and I would say I would say the Genesis was 
a phenomenal console when you compare those two mm-hmm. that are on the similar playing fields. Now, obviously, yeah, when the N64 came out in 96, I think, then it was like, well, okay. We're mm-hmm. in the 3D era now, baby. That's when the Dreamcast came out, which from a, again, performance standpoint and what it could do, incredible. Just that a was little, a beast. Yeah. A little too far ahead of its time. People couldn't even figure out how to develop for it. They're like, how do you... How do you do the 3D <laughs> graphics? What is this thing? What's the VMD? What, what is this? Um, so, yeah. I always, so you, get, I always get confused there because obviously I got the Mega Drive late. So, uh, in my mind, I keep comparing the Mega Drive with the N64. But you're right. They're two totally, completely different timelines. Yeah, different era. Yeah. Mm. So, when, when they were going to head-to-head with, with Nintendo, it was actually, like I think, a superior console. Um, it could do a mm-hmm. lot more. And it just, yeah, it just performed better. But... I do think, well, do you remember how, I don't know if you remember this or not, because you didn't have a lot of friends that had Nintendo consoles, but the same version of the Super Nintendo game would be on the Genesis, but it would be an entirely different game. Do you remember this? So for me, it was like the moment was... Is Lion King one of those? Lion King might be one of those. That's what made me think of it. And then Power Rangers was another one. Uh, So I think the Sega Power Rangers game was like a fighting game. And then then the one on Super Nintendo was like a beat-em-up. And I was, mm. I, and I remember being so confused. And maybe it's because they were entirely different games, but I think that was the case. Like, they both got licensed games at the same time, but one was an entirely different game. And you're just like, oh, I'm playing Lion King, but it's not the same Lion King that you're playing. You know, um, weird. And there was a platformer. There was a Lion King platformer on Super Nintendo. So if it's the same one, that that one's excellent. That one's that one's a, a great game. But they're 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 hard, and they are a little different, even if they are the same game. Yeah, I'm looking here. Oh, um, platform. So the Lion King platforms. Yes, SNES, Genesis, mm-hmm. Game Gear, Master System. Yeah, they look very similar. Yeah, there's some that are really similar, but I'm I'm almost certain the Power Rangers game is one where it's like Genesis versus Super Nintendo. I think they're I think they're very different. The better version. Yeah. Yeah. So weird. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie Sega Genesis. Oh man, do you remember the movie, the Power Rangers movie? Did you were you allowed to watch uh, the movie? I watched the TV show. Oh man, Ivan Ooze. <laughs> Power Rangers was the hotness back in the day, man. Those toys, <sighs> love it. Yeah, badass. So, so what do you think about the Mega Drive? Like, what what didn't you like about it? Do you remember anything distinctly about the console? We were just like, eh. Well, like this, this this moves on to both questions. It didn't have many accessories. Like looking back, there was no decent accessories. They had a multitude of like different controllers where third parties would come out with weird, unique controllers because I yep. think a lot of people realized how terrible the controllers were. But nothing really where you could like add stuff onto it. You probably had like your cheat cartridges that were pretty cool back in the day. But yep. I think you had like one or two like guns that you could use. But when reality like all I want as a kid is to be able to like you know add a sword to it or something stupid you know uh, you know maybe a, more affordable guns that you could attach accessories to and stuff but there weren't really many of that from what I can remember. Well, I was um, doing some research actually, and I typed in you know best Mega Drive accessories, and you're not going to believe this, but Retro Dodo ranks uh, number I think pretty high on that search result, if not number one for that search result. <laughs> oh, and and. Oh, yeah, we uh, do. And uh, there's like a light gun. There's this weird spaceship controller <laughs> that looks like. I terrible. remember. I think I remember that one. It was that disgusting. looks so bad. Like if you threw that at your your brother, rest <laughs> in peace, man. That's Mortal Kombat coming to your living room. <laughs> <laughs> what were they thinking? Making it look like a like an airplane? Because yeah, kids are gonna throw that. They're gonna they're gonna throw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's supposed oh. to be like a, a bomber, like a bomber plane. Yeah, Mega Jet fighter controller. This this remote had four buttons with a turbo mode and can use and also be used on the SNES if you had the right adapter. Two consoles for the price of one. Not bad, right? The design of the actual controller do, part does remind me of an SNES controller now that I look at it. And while turbo modes have never really floated my boat, this is a gadget that I would love to have in my own Sega setup. This is from Seb. Seb wrote this. I bet uh, that's old. I don't think we've updated that in a while. 2010, we updated that. 2020. I mean, one. that looks so bad. Like, that. that is... I mean... It, <laughs> I've seen worse controllers, but like that thing cannot be comfortable to hold. Like who who did this? Nah. nah. Who did this? Who was like, and, yeah, we're gonna make a you guys, controller. 
I've had the Sega Nomad. That's a handheld I really, really want. But those things are so expensive where you can actually play like Genesis uh, cartridges in handheld form. Um, I see a yeah. lot of companies like refurbing them, putting in backlit screens and stuff. But damn, they are expensive now. Because that was, that was after the uh, Game Gear, yeah? It was like mm-hmm. uh, the 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 part the second part of the Game Gear. Because it's, I mean, you literally can put uh sega games in the back of it yeah like full-blown cartridges Full genesis games that is wild came out in 95 i mean what a cool idea but that thing probably also died in like two seconds and uh yeah. but yeah i mean right here plays 500 plus genesis games includes genesis nomad and 16-bit color portable game system wow okay <laughs> wow. Oh, hold on here requires six double a batteries oh my goodness Damn, that's the same as a Game Gear, right? They still didn't get away from that, man. My goodness. And those buttons look like doo-doo. Those those, uh, those oblong dude. oval buttons on the right? No, no thank you, dude. No thank you. Well, if you ever find one, let me know, because that would be a fun little little segment. Here's my review of the Sega Nomad. It's trash. <laughs> it's terrible. I paid um, way too much for this. Which is a shame, because the Game Gear, like was incredible they nailed it on the head you know with colored front light display before nintendo like for me this is when sega was in its peak admittedly some would argue that was the dreamcast but mega drive game gear like late 90s mid 90s sega was absolutely killing it and i'm proud to be a sega kid but after the dreamcast you couldn't really support them and even nowadays like they're sega are more uh interested in like selling keychains and hoodies rather than making something cool these days and it makes me want to cry man well i i do think they're i do think they're doing okay with their licensing like with actually just making games and licensing stuff out they're doing all right um but yeah i mean it is it is kind of crazy it's kind of sad to think that sega existed at one time as a console manufacturer that was Mm -hmm. going head to head with the best and doing well in certain areas and then they just they bowed out you know, they bowed out after the Dreamcast, which is so sad because there was such potential. You know, it's like, dang it. But maybe one day they'll come back. Maybe the one day they'll, they'll surprise us all and they'll, they'll launch a console and it'll be the best thing in the world. But I hope I have... so, man. But I, th- I think you're right. They're more interested in licensing stuff out, which is fair. Like the Sonic franchise is still going ahead. Um, mm-hmm. And their movie, are they a part of the whole movie? I guess they are. Yeah. Kind of. They, they, I mean, they... they... Sonic is their their IP, so any Sonic movies that come out, there those ones did okay, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, they got like Shenmue, they got Super Monkey Ball, they got they got all kinds of stuff, man. Streets of Rage. Let's see what yeah. this, let's see yeah. what else here. Virtua Fighter, uh, Shin Megami Tensei, Like a Dragon, like Yakuza. Those those games are big right now. So yeah, I mean they're they're still doing pretty well in terms of their their IP, but. It'd be cool to see a console come back just to, agree, just to see man. what happens. Or even like the Dreamcast Mini that I've been dreaming about for like five years. Ooh. Like do it. You did it with the Mega Drive Mini, the Genesis Mini. Just give me a little Dreamcast Mini, man. Dude, or just like a handheld Dreamcast, something like that. Like it's just like the controller, but there's, there's a screen built into that big old controller. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Damn. Nice. You need to pitch nice. that. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone remaking the VMD, right? The little... The little virtual thingy that's plugged into the controller. Is yeah, I've got was... one of these. I got someone that uh, put like a Raspberry Pi in it. Oh, VMU. Forgive me, not VMD. VMU. Yeah, you, yeah. People are like plugging plugging other things into those and like reprinting them and making like making some cool stuff with the VMUs. So I don't know. That could be cool. That could be a cool thing too. Cool as the RG Nano. Am I right? <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right. So, uh, last question: Whatever happened to your original Mega Drive? Mega Drive? What was its fate? Oh man, I think it's like with any '90s kid, your dad just puts it in a box, sends it to the skip, or you know, <laughs> I, I think I actually now thinking about it, like car boots were a big thing in the UK, so maybe yeah. we did that to like uh, save for the next Dreamcast. But that's why I've had to like shell out on this next this analog version. Um, yeah, and some games. I could have bought the original Mega Drive, um, but but for well, research on. purposes, two things. Two things. What what is the skip? What is what is the skip? The skip? Yeah. Oh man, it's like the, the English dump? terminology of like the dump. Yeah. Oh, 
That's tragic. You just put it in a box and threw it in the trash. Yeah, you just yeet it into this like no. huge skill. Yeet. <laughs> no, the kids don't say yeet anymore, dude. You can't. You can't say yeet. No. The youths. The youths don't say that anymore, dude. Mm. Oh, that is funny though. That's tragic. I really hope that didn't happen, but it probably did. You're right. Because I was gonna say, if you still had it, that'd be that'd be amazing, dude. You could. You could that, would, that, thing out. that would. That um, would. But nope. Everything. Like I don't actually think I have any of my original um game stuff like not even a game boy came with me like once i was like 15 i'm like whoo i'd rather sell that for some new shoes to look cool in front of my friends because i don't play lion king no more <laughs> not me <laughs> you're playing super mario bros <laughs> you baby absolute loser uh yeah dude i i mean we didn't have we didn't have money to buy new consoles so we were always selling to trade up we, we, we would just go to the game yeah. store and just sell everything and I have such regrets over that because I'd be selling so much. Like I, I would be giving away my entire like Super Nintendo sixty four collection to buy. Like I think I pay. I think I, I bought a DS or I mm. bought a GameCube. I don't know. I bought something that was nominally worse than what I had, I had given them. I was like, no, it was an Xbox. It was the oh, original yeah, yeah. Xbox. I sold my N sixty four. I think I got an original Xbox. I, I don't know. Oh, to All be I fair, the is, original Xbox was badass. It was, but it all it had like three games that were worth playing. It was like Halo, Halo. And, and that's it. It was really <laughs> just Halo. Yeah, yeah. I remember I couldn't afford any other games at the, when I got the system, so there was like those little bargain bins, and I got like Minority Report and like... Minority Report? Is that the, the Matrix. movie with like Tom Cruise in? Yeah, and The Matrix. Oh, I just picked, up two, just picked up two shitty licensed games, and I was like, well... These are bad. I don't know why I did this. <laughs> you're just daydreaming about being in Corey's playing Zen 64 again while you're like crying at fucking Minority Report. <laughs> Why'd I do this? I mean, I had I had fun with Halo, but other than that, yeah, uh, mistakes were made for sure. Well, dang. Well, that that was that was a good trip down memory lane. I you know my experience with the Sega is I you know I never had one, but my friend Jeffrey did. My best friend Jeffrey. and old Jeffrey. I uh, would go over to his house, and he actually had a nice house too. Um, but his dad was a pilot, and so uh, he always had like cool like pilot gear in this like playroom. So I'd always like put on his dad's like pilot helmet, oh, sweet. and I would just turn on his Sega and just sit in his room <laughs> and play Sega. Nice. And he also had a PlayStation, so maybe there's like a trend of those kids who were Sega gamers. You know, maybe they felt shunned by Nintendo, and they're like, "I'm never going to Nintendo now." And they and they just moved to PlayStation instead because that's what he had. Also, he had a PlayStation. Yeah, but, that was very much the jump here in the UK. Sega to ma- Sony makes sense, man. It makes sense. And I mean, now I I uh, I love Sony. Like Sony is my my preferred console choice, and then N- Nintendo is my. I mean, I'll always have Nintendo. So, do you see the always. news about the? Do you see the the potential rumors about the Switch too? Uh no, is this new? Like today there's, new? Yesterday new? Eh, last week there was just like there was like a little like leak or like a little reported thing somewhere. Oh, what was it called? That, the Zoom, the Nintendo Zoom, something like that. Yeah, they confirmed some something weird about something hinting to a a, a, a predecessor. So we'll see. I think I think Anthony might have linked something about that, but it, Zoom implies that it's on the go it's fast you need something that you're just gonna whip out no right? you're actually or... you're actually there it's they're partnering up with zoom the video conferencing uh company and it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's how bad would that be dude? oh man to play oh. all these games you actually have to be on our video conferencing service zoom please yeah, make an account today. a month yeah oh man all right well before we close out brandon i gotta know man it's been like two weeks since we've talked what are you playing so every night, probably since yeah, since we last spoke, I've been playing a oh. little bit of Tetris in the evenings. And Dude, I remember telling you this before. I'm pretty bad at Tetris. I don't know the tips or tricks. I don't know, you know, I know how to get a Tetris where you get all the four and one. But yep, it, it's it's something I'm learning at the moment. And Nintendo, that's what they call it, Tetris DX on the Nintendo DS is what I'm playing at the moment. Uh, it's a good game. It's a good game. You know, you got this, it's got like Super Mario soundtracks and stuff. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. You know? That's a lot of people's favorite Tetris. Uh, everyone regards Tetris DX uh, very highly. They're like, that's that is a good version of Tetris if you're going to play one. So, it's lots of game modes and stuff. Heck yeah! Mm. Have you played Tetris Effect? The uh... no, I want to though. That looks incredible. 
it's pretty sick. Even without VR, it's cool. But I've played it in VR, and it's it's really it is very impressive. Like just the visuals of like giant neon whales like swimming around your head as you're playing Tetris, and there's like music that like. <laughs> I might yeah. have to um, message Corey, see if he's got a VR system. So I can come <laughs> around and play that. Just... <laughs> just call his mom. Just like call his landline if they still have one. Like, yeah. hey, hey, this is Corey's mom. Is, um, is Corey you Remember home? me? My name's Brandon. I was a slightly overweight kid with blonde hair and a, uh, an outdated game gear. <laughs> okay. uh, do you guys have a, a, happen to have a PlayStation VR can I, that I can use, please? <laughs> No, no, Corey doesn't have to be in. I can let myself in. <laughs> also, do you have chicken nuggets that you could heat up for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's awesome. What about well, you? What are you playing? Uh, so I bit the bullet and picked up Final Fantasy sixteen. Um, seventy. That, that $70 did not feel good, I will say. I did the digital version, too, which I didn't like. I was going to do the physical, and I, I had just played the demo, and I was like, I, I want to play this. I want to play this all the way. Uh, and it's great, man. It's it's really impressive. You're in your big games, aren't you? Like you're big kind of. You you got to put a lot of hours into Final Fantasy, or you can put a lot of hours into it. You can. Uh, from what I was reading, and like all the folks on the Twitters talking about this, they were saying you can skip over like a lot of the side quests. Uh, right. So it should end up only being like a probably a thirty to forty hour game, uh, which still is a lot. Uh, but yeah. I think comparatively to like other huge JRPGs or just RPGs in general, that it's not that bad for me. So. Yeah, I hope to finish that up or be be working through that over the next few weeks. And uh, I mean, like I was mentioning earlier, on my nice new soundbar, my 4K TV downstairs with 120 hertz refresh rate, it looks pretty freaking Ooh. nice. <laughs> looks pretty freaking good. Uh, isn't it sad that we, we, we hop on the pod every week and it's probably every two weeks we're buying a full priced game. And we're not completing or getting through majority of the, the one we bought previously. Because we both bought What's Diablo. That? Shit, I haven't even got a horse on Diablo yet. And I'm like, nah, I'm done. The... <laughs> well, I have a horse. I have a horse. And let me tell you something. My offer still stands. We should play Diablo sometime. We should. We should. We'll, we'll get some quests done. All right. I'll help you get through some dungeons. And, Give me a uh, horse. Yeah, I'll find you a horse. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the horses? I, I don't think you can get it until like... It's it's a late game mission that you get a horse. So oh damn, like level forty maybe. Shiver maybe. my timbers. <laughs> Shiver my 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 butthole. I think, that I'm, I is... think I'm level uh, ten. Ten. Mm. I don't know. You got a ways to go, but leveling up is pretty fast if you just play the main quest. So you're good. Yeah. Just do yeah. it before the like get to the very end before the new uh, season drops. Just, right. just, to, just to say that you did the main quest, the main campaign, and you're good to go. You know, you can yeah. leave it at that. I might just do that. So, screw yeah. this side quest. Just main quest all the way, baby. Exactly, baby. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, cool. And, folks, that is all the time we have this week. Listeners, what are your thoughts on the Mega Drive or the Sega Genesis? Let us know by writing into retrospect at retrododo.com or commenting on your preferred listening channel. Brandon, what do you want to plug this week? Ooh, what are we gonna plug? Um, oh, a little bit. I like giving our podcast listeners a little insider insider knowledge. Um, World premiere. So, not anything to plug, but maybe over the next few months, we're gonna create like a retro dodo premium section on our website where you can get, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can get a welcome kit. There'll be no ads. You'll get a invite to a yearly party here, maybe London or closer to me. Um, exclusive giveaways deals and stuff and maybe some early access to videos and maybe even podcasts oh so that's the kind of goodness. stuff we're planning at the moment um just to support just to show if you need to if you want to support the the brand a little bit more and you can get some exclusive goodies i love that i love that i think in a in an age where where uh more and more um people are moving to voices or brands that they want to um sort of support and trust i think that's uh that's the way to go yeah because that times. bloody ai is on our doorstep <laughs> taking our breadcrumbs dude uh, you're like the leader of the the people against the ai coalition you should uh you should unionize and form a group in the, like in the will UK. smith have i robot yeah exactly exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, although he befriended one of the robots so you need to befriend at least one ai robot and then 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 take take care of the rest because he actually ended up saving the robots, so I don't, I don't know now if you should do that. 
what a movie. Um, I have no plugs, uh, but I do have some new gear that I'll be uh, setting up and uh, maybe doing some streaming with eventually. I don't know what I'm going to stream yet. I need to, I need mm. to finish Zelda, to be honest. I haven't finished uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm close. So maybe I'll stream some of that. Who knows? Who knows? Now that I have a, now that I have a new house and an actual office that I can stream inside of without waking everyone up in the house, this is going to be great. Oh man, I'm ex- I'm excited for you to like just over the years like craft that room into like a perfect little production creation gaming I room. A, I got a blank slate right now, baby. Yeah, jealous, but dude. Just wait, just wait. I'm gonna have a whole gamer den in here, dude. I'm gonna have like I'm gonna have neon lights everywhere, and it's gonna I'm gonna look like a 12 year old. It's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> sick. <laughs> Lion King uh, posters, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Woo. Actually, I like the way your room is set up. Uh, honestly, your your room. I'm gonna do a exact carbon copy of your room. Just cause it's, it's yeah, it's cozy. I went for like this the smokers lounge kind yeah, of dude. nerd room. Um, smokers lounge. Mm. Rip some cigarettes when you're in there. Yeah. <laughs> Just ruin that room and all your electronics. <laughs> yeah, it stinks. They all smell terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they're, all, they're all going gray. All yeah. of my like, limited edition Pokemon cards are crusty. Turning uh, brown. <laughs> <laughs> Kate's oh. leaving you. She's like, why, like why, what are you doing? Why are you smoking in the house? Yeah. As I get more and more blind. <laughs> yeah. Picking up cigarettes. I've heard. I've heard that's good for uh, for your vision <laughs> <laughs> and just general health benefits. All right, cool. Well, until then, y'all, we will catch you in the next episode. Ciao.